Some of my colleagues and I looked at uh, mirabegron tolerability in patients with overactive bladder and multiple sclerosis. Essentially, we use different medications for overactive bladder, urinary urgency, frequency, in multiple sclerosis, and some of them have side effects that actually end up um, resulting in discontinuation of medications. So, um, Dr. Brucker, Ben Brucker, who's our urologist on site at the MS Center, we started using Mirabegron, 50 milligrams, and we decided to take a look at it in a more structured way to see if um, patients' experiences on Mirabegron um, were favorable, if they were having less side effects than maybe we typically see in some of the anticholinergic medications. And in fact, we found that in a small group of patients and using patient report that they did in fact tolerate uh, medication quite well and had a reduction in constipation, which is a big side effect in some of the overactive bladder medications. In addition to reduction in the constipation, uh, which is a very common symptom in multiple sclerosis to begin with, uh, along with urinary uh, dysfunction being a very common symptom, uh, we also saw that patients actually um, responded quite well to it. And the efficacy studies have been done and, and this wasn't an efficacy study, it was really looking at tolerability. When we're talking about overactive bladder symptoms, uh, literature will report anywhere from 30 to 70 percent, um, even greater in terms of urinary urgency frequency. Um, and in terms of constipation, we can see numbers at 50 percent to 70 percent also. Some of that has to do with, it's directly related to the multiple sclerosis. Um, but also we can see that some of the medications that we add on antagonize, such as the bladder meds, which are drying people out a little bit, and then they're um, reducing fluid intake to try to manage their urinary symptoms, and then they end up even more constipated. So it's definitely a huge quality of life issue, and um, we have tr made tremendous um, progress in terms of disease modifying therapies and that's wonderful but we still I think sometimes um, struggle with just quality of life and symptom management and this is a huge issue for patients. Mirror background is used for urinary dysfunction. Um, it's a beta-3 agonist that's used so it's just it's a little unique in that it um, is different than some of the classic bladder meds that we've used in the past which do carry with it a lot more uh, side effects. So we were specifically curious to see if there were less side effects with this med. And, and it panned out that, in fact, there were. And we're hoping to now move forward with a larger study um, in a more um, um, structured way. We were actually just using what the FDA has approved, Mirabegron 50 milligrams, but specifically looking at it in our population. Overwhelmingly, it's really very well tolerated, and um, the biggest concerns um, were about um, side effects that impact the quality of life and, and increasing risk for discontinuation because of that. Clearly, you know, some of our patients are um, on a multitude of medication, and polypharmacy is a concern. Um, clearly, we don't want our symptomatic medication um, affecting the uh, response of disease-modifying therapies and vice versa, and that's not something that we're worried about with this medication. from here, go back to the States, and, and then um, hopefully look at um, recruiting um, more patients, maybe doing something in a more randomized way, um, and really looking at how you know, patients ultimately uh, fare in terms of quality of life and, um, and tolerance of this medication.